Welcome back, 0K fans! This is Shadow 33 with another exhibition match. This time we're gonna have a match between C21 and Lowry on Onyx Cauldron. The C21, not a player I've seen very much of. I saw a game actually between them and Lowry as well. It Floris casted. Floris the 14th, another. Another caster who is more insightful than I am. And they cast a game between Lowry and C21 on Battle for Planet 17, which was a real turtle fest. Like, lots of defenses. It, I mean, shield, shield bot versus shield bot. It's an interesting showcase of how that develops, but yeah, it it had defenses. It had the high level defenses that you get in the defense menu that no one ever really builds in 1v1, or even most team games. Behemoth, Annihilator, Doomsday Machines, like everything. Everything that gets built, all the special Strider class building, well, okay, maybe not Big Birth and Silencer, but still. All the big stuff was built, pretty much. It was it was one of those games. And I don't know if this is going to be one of those games, too, because Honest Cauldron is not as defensible in a way as Battle for Planet 17 is. And in other ways, it actually, well, the southwest side is, if you look at the map itself, the southwest side does have choke points that are fairly easy to defend. The northeast side, however, basically doesn't. The water kind of acts as a choke point, but you can shoot across the water. A lot of units have a range to get across it. So ultimately, it doesn't pose that big of a problem. I don't think we're going to see that. And Laura actually is going to be going for tanks to start out. But very likely not to see too much... Well, okay, actually, it is likely to see a lot of heavy def defenses because tanks kind of motivate the construction of defense turrets. It's really hard to defend with mobile units until you get like, half a dozen Panthers, and that can take a while. And that can take a good few minutes. While C21, on the other hand, is going for Hovercrafts, which I haven't actually seen in a while, but they're good too. And C21 going for three metal into two power, and I still think... I mean, I have to really test this, but I'm fairly certain that the best thing to do is two metal, two solar, and then one metal for the generally starting three spots. Which I think Lowry more or less did. But yeah, that I think is the easiest way to stop an e-stall. And get your 10-10 as quickly as possible. Anyway. C21 has a quill and a couple daggers. Not building daggers that quickly they have actually started to stall out in power, building wind generators to support their solars. Point out the wind generator on this map on the starting location is not actually that good. It's 0.3 minimum. So it's okay, but it's not as reliable as solar. Up here, it's much better. If you're going to build it up, I think you can actually see if I were to show... Yes, I can. So yeah, up here, as you can see, the wind range is 1.6, 1.1. So about here is where you need to be, like this hill. That's where it becomes about as cost-effective as a solar. Not down there. I'm sorry, I can't point out the tooltip itself because that's part of the mouse cursor thing. Anyway, Lowry and C21 are getting a bit of a fight. Lowry actually doing not, some nice harassment, getting rid of that quill, trying to get rid of a metal extractor, but not succeeding in doing so. The, will get rid of the dagger, and the dagger gets half the health down the Kodachi. More daggers coming in, however, which will stop the Kodachi from dealing with any of the metal extractors, but the quill does survive. Barely survives and can go back to building up the north side of the map, while Lowry, once again, just like the last game, has lost their opening Kodachi harassment. Getting Walders out, however, and going straight to the northeast side of the map, very quickly building up there. So pretty much building about the same way as C21 is. C21, not actually, neither player focusing on the southwest side of the map at all yet. Both of them going towards the northeast. And C21 will be doing some counter harassment. Probably going to find that welder and that dagger will, conveniently, because it is a hovercraft, so nice, goes over water, be able to get to the welder. The welder, however, should be able to kill the dagger before, oh well, if it was going to fight the welder. Yeah, it'll, it'll kill the dagger. That dagger is way too damaged to be able to be useful in this situation. I mean, welders do have a light weapon. It's 44 damage a second, so actually it's not that light. And against the 300 health that that daggers have, it's nothing to be scoffed at, especially since they are actually hitting each other, which, yeah, that's something that happens. I think, I'm not sure who's damaging the dagger. I think the daggers have killed themselves more than the welders have. Yeah, yeah. Man, this game really makes... The when with friends like these phrase have whole new meanings. Like with friends like these, who needs hired assassins? I mean, I'll do it for you. 
I mean, really, friends don't let friends pay for assassins anyway. But... Usually that's not meant in quite that way. However, C21 is... I think slightly ahead... Yeah, slightly ahead economic... Or sorry, slightly ahead mil militarily. Slightly ahead economically as well, and looks to be poised to actually get the northeast side. Because Lowry had to retreat with Welder, getting a bit of a slower build-up, and building Lotuses as well, thanks to that pressure. Kodachi, however, is coming in here for Lotus, which will be able to get rid of C21's daggers fairly effectively, at least push them back and keep C21 honest. Not necessarily kill anything, just, just keep them honest, because that is going to be a lot of economy that could be coming up here. And C21 going over to the north as well. Okay, C21 at this point will be able to stop this harassment, but I think these forces here should be going south. This mace and a couple of the daggers should be going south and dealing with this front, or going around the back here, or possibly just going straight in the main base. They might be uh, might be a bit overkilling. C21 probably isn't super confident in their ability to micro around Lowry, which I completely understand, so I can see why the mace is there. However, that mace isn't fast enough. It's not going to catch up to the units. Better option is to use the mace to go forward and either block off potential supply lines of units, although with heavy tank that's not a thing that really happens, so you get to the point of Reapers, as we are now, or to basically deal with the base, to harass, smash everything up. That is... That is all that can really be done there, and that being said, the mace actually on an intercept path would have been perfect, as the Panther and Kodachis are going south, but unfortunately that is not going to happen. So this mace and dagger is woefully underused, and C21 hesitating a bit to get the northeast. Neither player, like I said, has capitalized in the southwest. Neither player has taken it. Oh, sorry, never mind. C21 is starting to take it, as is Lowry. Lowry getting a little bit later in, but with the commander, so it will be a bit faster to build. And C21 going with another mace down in the center, using the mace in a, well, what I would consider a more proper way of using it in this context. There is still a mace over to the northeast to defend, which I can understand. That definitely makes sense. C21 will, however, be finding Lowry's expansion to the northeast, well, with their quill, which means that the quill will probably have a hard time. The welder, like I said, does have a fairly powerful weapon. For our constructor, at least. I mean, definitely, constructor wars, it will win. Now, C21 does have to be careful on this one. They have, I mean, they have the water. That's their advantage. That gives them a bit of a range advantage as well. And they do have maces, so they are kind of type countering, sort of. But they don't have a huge amount of power. Really, the type counter would actually be Scalpel in this case, not Mace. Against Kodachi and Panther, Mace can be of some use. I mean, Panther, that's got 980 health. Yeah, actually, it's not really. That takes three seconds to kill the Panther, and... I think by that point, the Panther will actually stun... Well, two Panthers will stun on a Mace. Like, as a Riot unit, it will not be able to really deal with Panthers in groups. They're about the same cost, too, so really... It's about on par. I'd say that really the type counter is the scalpel. It, in this case, you kind of have to treat the panther as more if it's assault roll or possibly semi riot roll than you do a raider roll when it comes to figuring out what archetype you should be using to counter it. At least for hovercraft. Hovercraft should definitely be using scalpels just to get that range advantage and to get the alpha on it too, to kill it off before it does anything. However, C21 doesn't care about that at all. It's going straight for the assault and those maces getting locked out a bit. And this is what I'm kind of talking about. However, the dagger is being very useful as blockading everything. Mace is being able to get in, deal the damage they need to, get rid of the lotuses. Does go down to a welder, though. Or, no, not quite. Almost goes down to a welder. While the dagger's taking care of this entire expansion of the front, pushing Lowry back a bit. And C21 at this point, I should point out, has actually taken most of the map. Lowry has taken the northeast, does have that under their control, but C21 can pretty easily sweep there once they get a few free units. At the moment, they have to be focused on here. They, this is where they need to be concentrating. But once this fight is over, the northeast side, that's pretty tasty to take out, get rid of that welder and stop Lowry's expansion there. Southwest, however, has been largely taken over by Lowry. Like I said, the commander does build twice as fast as a standard worker. And that is exactly what we've seen. Actually, to that effect, the quill appears to have been killed. Or, at the best, stopped. Yeah, there's definitely one metal extractor that's not been taken. And back to the battle here, we have, well, more daggers and panthers coming in. I think C21 just has to retreat. Retreat, regroup. They really need to get scalpels. If that's going to decide the game is if they get scalpels, and I don't think they will. They're focusing heavily on maces and daggers. And at this point, mace and dagger is not really appropriate. I guess the Reaper can work okay, but against the panthers, it's really tricky to make work. 
So I could not see that being the best option. Really, the daggers are what's helping against the Panthers more than the maces. The maces are dealing the damage, though. The daggers just been... They are running interference, which is helpful. But the scalpels can just kill them off. Like, scalpels... Scalpel has... Oh, good. They are being killed. Well, good for... C21, they are being built. That's 620 damage. You see here... 310 per shot. That's 620 damage. It's every 10 seconds, yes, but it's 620 damage and alpha damage. Two, two of those kill a panther. And they have a bit of splash, too. However, the mazes are getting enough damage in. There has been some deaths. They're having a lot of dagger deaths. But they're having some panther deaths as well. And the mazes operating as a pretty handy assault force. Which, like I said, they are... They will work, in this case, as an assault. But then again, that's a lot of health on that Reaper. Huge amount of health on there. Half a dozen scalpels will do the trick, but not not the maces easily. Going over instead of the southwest to break up Lowry's expansion over here. Lowry's major economic expansion is over here and over here. So C21 going in the north with some daggers while going to the southwest with some maces, or at least, yeah, going to the southwest, not just threatening. Outright going there. Daggers able to take out a Lotus and take out one of the metal extractors. The other metal extractors are mostly undefended. Well, one of them is undefended. The other one has a Stardust right next to it. And these defenders are covering the metal extractor, so C21 will have to carefully micro around that. Have to go... Basically, they have to go here. Not sure they're going to do that. And the maces, over to the southwest, are going to be much more successful. Defenders are able to take out a couple of them, but these defenders will be going down. And with them, Lowry's commander. So C21 can take out the southwest side. And from that point, though, Lowry does have a lot of forces being built up in their main base. They had built up a lot of Reapers and Kodachis. And they are pushing back. Now, to point out, there is a nice little power set up for C21 in the center of the water. Hard to, to get at. And once again, the southwest being broken up. The northeast being broken up as well. But that does mean C21 is out of position to defend from the center attack. Now, if they're able to defend this, I think C21 will be able to just pull ahead thanks to this harassment. And the fact that Lowry's commander is dead as well. This stage in the game is not the biggest deal. But that does mean the southwest is basically unrebuildable right now. And the scalpels are up. There are three of them so far. Two of which just about to meet up with the expansion. Not with the forces, though. Lowry's forces, however, have been... Well, have been somewhat damaged. Panther, however, doing some raiding. Kodachi's as well to the north. Raiding out a lot of C-21's undefended metal extractors. So at this point, Lowry invading to the north. C-21 invading in the southwest. The invasion of the southwest has been highly su successful. They need to rebuild here. And they have a quill right here, which should be going here. It's going to get itself killed going here. Going over to the center is suicide, but going to the southwest is fine. The southwest is taken. The Stardust being the only problem. But this metal extractor and these metal extractors here are pretty, are relatively safe. However, this is it. This is the big battle to determine the game. These Reapers, if they die, then it's going to be a lot harder for Lowry to get through. If they live, then I think C21 is going to lose the game outright. But Lowry, on the other hand, we saw last game, is not particularly aggressive. And this game proving no exception. Lowry could actually push in with this, I think. It's a bit tough. It depends on what's in the main base, but given that halberds are being switched to rather than more scalpels or more maces just for the meat shield, it's a little bit hard. I mean, the halberds are being there for meat shield as well, but I think at this point firepower is more necessary. Lowry, however, switching to air, but will be losing these bombers pretty quickly to the scalpels, and flails are very difficult to deal with. Flails are extremely powerful anti-air, and I don't see C21 going for them yet. Probably confident in the scalpels. That, or they haven't really thought about the fact that they're now dealing with air. An air switch. They are, however, cutting off the supply line. So at least Lowry has been able to secure the northwest side of the map. Sorry, northeast side of the map. Securing the northwest side of the map would constitute a win. Secure the northeast side of the map. But they are partially cut off. They have to go through the land bridges here. Bit of a slower trek and could be cut off fairly easily from this position. And like I said, C21 has taken the southwest as well. A well they're going in to try to rebuild, and I'm really surprised that no quills have come in to rebuild this in the meantime. C21 could use those resources. Could use them very much. And C21 going for a cloaky switch. I don't really know why. Possibly for gremlins. But yeah, I'm really not sure exactly what the motivation is for that one. And the scalpels. Not in the right position. There will need to be flails to deal with this. Of which there are many actually coming up. Half a dozen flails are being built up, so that's going to work out. And glaives coming in for extra raiding power. That won't be of any use here. This Stardust will shut that all down. 
The Lotus's help as well, but the Stardust, that will do everything. However, once again, Lowry out of position here. These Reapers are over to the northeast, heavily defending this, so Lowry going for a much more defensive game once again like last time, meaning C21 can take advantage of this. The raiding works. I mean, this area is basically undefended. There's one Lotus, but that doesn't really count. And essentially containing the northeast and containing to the southeast while taking the rest of the map would work out nicely. Just needs to have Quills going around here taking these Metal Extractors. These Metal Extractors are... And Reclaim. That's the other thing. The Reclaim here is huge. But nothing's doing that. And that is going to be a problem. I think that's going to... If C21 is going to lose the game, it's because they haven't taken essentially free resources. I mean, they might, might not be free permanently, but they're going to be free long enough. Rays are coming in the center of the map as well. The Flails should be coming in. There we go. There are the Flails. They are now finally getting into position to deal with these Ravens, but at the same time, Kaluga switch from Lowry on top of that. Man, I mean, the Glaives will be able to deal with this, and despite that, the Scalpels will probably go down. The Flails are, however, able to mostly deal with this, and the Glaives over to the north. Sorry, not Glaives. Halberds with Maces over to the north, but not able to deal with the Stardust. The Halberds should have been on hold fire there. In the center of the map, Napalm Armor's getting rid of pretty much everything that C21 had built up for a contain. There are still flails here, and this east side of the map now being destroyed, like I said, undefended, free mexes. And Glaive's coming to raid out the south side of the map, which is also basically free. This Lotus will go down, it'll kill off a... Oh no, never mind, the Glaive's came in in a pretty bad order. We'll get rid of the Lotus nonetheless, but it's... Gonna, yeah, losing five Glaives in the process, or four Glaives in the process. It's pretty huge. Still, flails coming in here, able to get rid of... Well, almost get rid of this. The hill got in the way of one of the missiles, this hill here. The Glaive... Doing a nice job here, but at the same time, it's going to go down. Not going to last too long. However, Z21 getting a nice contain, and there we go. Getting a Conjurer over to the southwest side of the map to take that. The northeast side is still fairly secure. The Stardust having been repaired. But pretty much everything is belonging to C21 now. Lowry still fairly head economically, largely thanks to Overdrive. And Lowry's overdriving their mechs is one and a half times, or two times even in some cases. Yeah, this is actually two and a half times for this Metal Extractor. And over here as well, there's a lot of overdrive for Lowry. While C21, on the other hand, not focusing on overdrive so much. They have a bit of it, but it's very little. They are, however, getting a lot of metal extractors, and that's... That's kind of the thing. C21's a little bit spread out. However, Lowry... It's just a matter of stopping these assaults. If they, these assaults get stopped, and a lot of stopping is actually the Kodachis killing their own Glaives. So d dealing with the Kodachis is the big thing to do. The Glaives, they are dying to friendly fire. Which as has been mentioned many times, is a terrible misnomer, but in this case, the only word I've got. They are dying to unfriendly fire. There are, however, enough to deal with this, so the entire southwest side has been reduced to a no-man's land at this point. Neither player has control over that. The south northeast is controlled by Lowry, so C21 once again falling behind. Having not really consolidated this, they didn't build this quickly enough to get the resources to consolidate it. They are, however, getting some nice reclaim, which is good. Not in the commander, though. The commander has been unreclaimed at this point. Still 500 metal and reclaim on this commander. That is, or commander wreck rather. That's a lot of metal that C21 really could have used. But at this point, it's basically secure for Lowry unless C21 breaks this up, which they look to be trying to do, but they won't be able to do. This glaive on its own, not able to do so. As the further glaives come in, it's not going to even matter. However, looks like even then, Lowry is actually pulling out, leaving C21 able to reclaim this entire the southwest side. However, that doesn't matter, C21 throws in the towel regardless. GG we see from C21, that gives Lowry the game. The C21 had a bit of a chance, just that southwest side, really important. Need to have taken that southwest side, and if they'd be able to break up the northeast side as well, taking that from Lowry, that would have sealed it. But, yeah, that southeast side, they're just too timid on that one. And did not take the chance that they had available to them. So Lowry will be able to finish this off. And the Z21 will, well, presumably lose. I mean, they've said GG. It, that, that's typically what you say before you surrender. I think Z21 is just double checking to make sure that they are actually going to be losing. But yeah, at this point, Lowry has pretty much secured the southwest side. Getting a Stardust there as well. And that's pretty much game. Just waiting for that to actually go through. But yeah, once that happens, then it'll be game. And yes, this, the Glaives do not counter Kodachis at all. That's the thing. They, they really don't. C21 
Scalpels counter them, counter them. Rocco's sort of counter them. Warriors will do a number on them, although it's kind of hard to catch up. I mean, Clokebot just has a hard time dealing with Kodachis in general. But anyway, C21 going for a bit of a last stand here. However, Lowry has had the time and resources to consolidate this whole section, and because they were relying on overdrive, they do have less territory to defend. Bit of a risky strategy to go for because, of course, it can be surrounded and contained out, but in this case, it seems to have paid off. Although, C21 still hasn't surrendered, so I'm not sure where the GG came in. They're actually, they're still pushing pretty hard. Still going for scalpels, they're still pushing out copperheads. They. i not sure if they meant that GG there. They're still trying to take the southwest, too. In fact, they've. They're going into a bit of commander. or sorry, into con wars here. Getting the Lotus. I mean. The slight advantage to the Welder for having the ability to attack directly, but still that Lotus is going to be able to go up, and it's going to get repaired, and that... Oh, never mind, it is going to be built up. But yeah, with the Reclaim here, C21 is actually still getting ahead. They're heavily micromanaging this section, though. And that Lotus won't be able to kill the Welder in time. The one problem, that Welder will basically not go down. I mean, at this point, Lowry is still feeding metal directly into C21's hands, but... C21 losing a lot of their units. The Maces are doing a good job now. They are working against the Glaives. Unlike against the Panthers, but yeah, Reapers will be coming in af after that, which really the problem is the Ravens. The Reapers actually are being countered fairly well by the Maces, but the Bombers just stop that. Ravens stop all that. However, Lowry able to come in with Glaze, bought enough time to stop those defenses, and ultimately does take that southwest side potentially. But at the same time, Lowry is invading over to the northeast, sorry, northwest. Can't really get the north. Can't get the center though. That's that's on the water. Can't really stop that. It's not, no, no, they can't. They have nowhere near the range to do so. That would need to be a pillager or a tremor to stop that. And I don't even know if it would work because the splash would be going underwater. Hmm. Good question. However, it doesn't really matter. Lowry is pulling ahead, especially with the na the phoenixes are just getting rid of glaze here and there. The ravens are getting rid of all the key units. And really, as once. Lowry goes for an assault, it's gonna be game. C21 is getting pincered in. Yeah, they're in the center. They didn't manage to get the center to sweep. Because the thing is, when you go for center, what you want to do is go to center and then sweep off to the northeast or southwest. When you're in a diagonal map like this or Titan Duel or something like that. Going on the corners is a bit risky because you're spreading yourself out more and it's harder to defend between the two. But it does mean that once you're established, you pincer in your opponent if they're going center. They have to either take a side more directly or they're having to basically try to win by rushing your main base and trying to kill off your main base entirely before the pincer happens and destroys their entire center, leading to the destruction of their base and ultimately the loss of the game for them. Lowry has at this point not quite but fairly nearly secured the southwest side, especially given the factory choices of C21. Nothing has been set up to deal with these glaives. And the northeast side has been secure. This has been pretty much untouchable for the last, 50, last 10 minutes, I think. It's been in practice untouchable for the last 10 minutes. It's been untouchable just by looking at it for at least the last 5. It's going to take a lot for C21 to push that, and C21 does not have the resources to get the... Okay, not even that. Just, yeah, 10k army on top of that. There's just no way. Lowry has twice the economy, has nearly twice the army size, and this is without Lowry's commander too, by the way. I should point that out. Lowry's commander was destroyed. Yeah, Lowry's commander was destroyed. C21 still has their commander. So really, it is double. Like C21's actual army value without the commander is about 6,000. Compared to 11,000. Most of that being Reapers, mind you, but still, that's just going to mean... Like, sure, as an expensive door knocker, but that's all Lowry needs right now. Is just to knock down C21's doors and go for Shieldbot Factory. Okay, going for Roaches. That makes sense, but... Mostly because Lowry has taken air control. That's the main reason it doesn't make sense, because really, this, these phoenixes have been causing all manner of pain to C21, and there's nothing C21 can really do about it without, I mean, the flails sort of help, but the ravens have been killing those, and the flails have been on the water this entire time, not now moving out to defend, but it's hard to do so. Getting rid of one of the ravens for free, that was a good kill there. Going over to the northeast primarily, save the glaives that are setting up for harassment, but these reapers will stop them. I mean, if the flails get caught out, and the flails are about to get caught out too, See, Lowry's well aware of this, or probably will, well, not well aware of this, actually not aware of this at all. But likely will be aware of this soon enough, and yep, aware of this now. 
going for those flails, and they are free targets. And these glaives here could actually kill this Lotus. But C21 looks to be trying to help defend against the Rocco Scourge here. Lowry, like I said, has kind of taken the southwest. There is a maze coming here to try to break that up. It, not really doing much, though. And at the same time, we do have Glaives over in the back. Ooh, clever. Glaives in the back turning into warriors. No, turning into sides, sorry. But this one is getting spotted out. C21 being on the ball about those Glaives. Getting rid of them, stopping them from morphing, stopping them from ping. I mean, that would have been quite the sneaky scythe right there. Doesn't matter, though. I mean, Lowry, sure, they can't kill him from the front. Sorry, kill him from the back, but... They can kill him from the front. Ah, sorry, that was a bit of a... Screw that up there. But yeah. Like I said, they have the door knocker. Or battering ram, actually. To be more precise. At this point, you have half a dozen reapers. That That is at least a battering ram. And it's coming down hard. C21 basically has about two minutes to maybe pull out something with those roaches. At this point... None of them have been built because everything's been convict so far, I guess for safe construction. But at this point, roaches are the priority. That has to be prioritized first, not convicts. At this point, Lowry, Lowry knows the priorities. Lowry doesn't really care. Lowry doesn't have to prioritize. They are way ahead. C21, however, does have to prioritize, and prioritizing roaches would have helped a lot. They would have probably had three or four roaches by now, and would have been able to knock this away. Wouldn't have won, at least not immediately, but would have at least delayed this. But at this point, not much can really be done there. And Goliath, because why not? I mean, at this point, yeah, that's... That's pretty insane to deal with. I think that is going to do it. And yeah, the Roach not even getting in, because the thing is, getting the Roaches early would have meant the Roaches could have actually dug in first, instead of having to try to weave through Reaper shots in order to actually kill them. Or weave through Goliath shots, which is pretty much impossible, or Rocco shots, which is fairly difficult. So yeah, ultimately... That was poor prioritization on the part of C21. They are actually focusing quite a lot on constructors. They've been funneling constructors into everything. I think they are a team player. That's the only way I can describe why they're doing what they're doing. I know team games, you build constructors a lot, but in 1v1, not so much. Especially when you're behind this far militarily. You don't build constructors if you don't have the energy, or rather the metal in this case for it. Metal is the bottleneck for the 14, metal 34 energy. Yeah, definitely not the time to build builders. It's definitely the time to be actually focusing on getting killing units. You know, killy things. But no, nope, doesn't happen. C21 throws in the towel. That is game. Lowry takes that, and I will have time for one more. Yeah, I should have enough time for one more. So we'll be back with another game. It'll be Google Frog and Aquanim on Isis Delta. That'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.